Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today for our second episode of Startup Sharp with the Augusta Library. Holloway, I am the public relations assistant at the library, and I'll be navigating you through this webinar today. And Startup Sharp will consist of four different webinars that will be streaming on our Facebook, our Twitter, and our YouTube channel every Monday at 5.30 p.m. Now, last week, we talked about a marketing plan and it being an essential tool when starting your own business. Developing a plan will also help you think about what makes your business unique and how to get the message out to desired audiences through a variety of channels. And today, let me get the little PowerPoint up for you. And today, we're going to continue talking about creating that business plan for your startup. And we're going to look at day-to-day -day operational plans. We're going to look at your pricing and your competitor pricing. We're going to look at creating your own budget. And we're also going to look at different ways to market. Tying your operational business goals into your marketing plan help ensure that everything you are doing helps your company grow. Different kinds of businesses have different operations, but no matter the business, operations matter for a few different reasons. They help your company create value. They affect your business's profits, and they also help your business stand out. Operations are generally comprised of smaller tasks. Each of these individual steps is referred to as an operational activity. A great way to identify your operations clearly and help you repeat, measure, and improve on them is creating an operations manual. When creating your operations manual, you should do an outline of your business's day-to-day -day operations, including your hours of operation and the days the business will be open. Now, most of you are gonna be doing a small business from home, but if you were ever thinking about moving into a larger business, um, you would wanna look at your location. And in your manual, you're gonna to wanna to describe the type of location you would be in, where your site would be, and the location of the premises for your building. Um, if applicable, include drawings of your building, copies of a lease agreement, or recent real estate appraisals. Um, you'll need to show how much the land or buildings required for your business operations are worth and tell why they're important to your proposed business. You're also going to write down how much equipment you need. You're going to need to include its worth and its cost in case you need to explain any financing arrangements. You're also going to want to look at your materials and state whether you're getting materials you need to produce your product or service and explain what terms you've negotiated with suppliers. For production, you're going to want to explain how long it takes, when you'll be able to start producing the product, and include factors that may affect the time frame of production and describe how you'll deal with potential challenges such as rush orders. You're also going to want to explain how you're going to keep track of your inventory and give details of product cost estimates. Pricing and competitive pricing. In order to make your sales count, you're going to wanna to price your products properly. And this takes knowing your labor and material costs as well as any additional expenses. This will also take research of your competitor's costs. Your competitor's price will help you find the price that future customers are currently paying. Decide on a minimum profit that you would want to make. Knowing your minimum will help you figure out how close to your break-even price you can get and still move towards your goal. This will also help you avoid overcharging your product. Setting budgets and tracking expenses will help you make sure you have enough money to stay open, prepare you for potential problems, and grow your business. List all of your expenses. 
taking note whether they are one-time or reoccurring, fixed or variable. Use account software like QuickBooks, Xero, and FreshBooks to track your profits and expenses. Now there are, there are many different ways to market your business in this day and age. Your marketing definitely needs to make a statement and capture your customer's attention. So here we've just listed a few different forms of marketing that you can take a look at. For website marketing, every small business needs a strong website and a strong marketing strategy on the website. With more traffic coming through your website means more opportunities to put your value in front of a potential customer. Popular social media channels include Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and Snapchat. Each of these social media platforms are unique in their own right and require unique ways of engagement. Rather than trying to master it all at once, just choose a few that you would like and try to master those platforms on your own first. Mailing lists or email lists allow for widespread distribution of information to many internet users. There are many different mail marketing sites out there that you can get signed up for. And for instance, here at the library, we actually use one called MailChimp where we send out our newsletter, uh, we send out different emails for different events that we have going on in different programs. So that's just an example of what you could do with that. Um, you could share like if you wanna do some uh, different contests or anything like that, you can share that with potential customers through email marketing. Um, another form is creating valuable content. Uh, there's blogging, you can create videos, uh, hosting podcasts, designing infographics for your Facebook or your Instagram or your Pinterest, um, or even just submitting small articles online to uh, different media sites. Um, these are just some different ways to create valuable content. Um, you can just do the old school word of mouth, just uh, getting out there and meeting people or passing out flyers and just spreading the good word about your new business. And um, and then we're back to contests and giveaways. You know, everyone loves a free gift. Uh, everyone loves a good giveaway. And that's a chance for you to give away one of your products so that people can see, you know, how the product is. Um, it builds brand awareness and it helps you connect with potential customers. And so now we're going to go back and we're going to take a look at the Primer app again. And if you weren't here for our last episode, I will tell you a little bit about what Primer is. Uh, Primer is a free mobile app from Google that offers quick, easy to understand lessons for business owners and anyone looking to grow their business and digital marketing skills. And all of the information I've shared with you today has come from individual lessons in the Primer app. It's very easy to navigate. Um, all you have to do is download from either your Google Play Store or your Apple Store, just depending on which phone you have. And the app will introduce you to a variety of lessons that will help you with starting your own business. And we're in the Primer app again. And you see it has the search bar at the top. So if you're wanting to search a lesson, you can go up there and search. Um, we're just going to take a uh, quick look at um, creating a project budget. And so, again, you know, at the beginning of these, you can just kind of see that it'll ask you some questions that they will answer for you through the um, through the lesson. And they usually set you up with um, some different scenarios that they want you to work through. Um, we're going to skip through the scenario for right now, but if you download the app, you can definitely try out these different scenarios for yourself. Um, and, you know, in this le lesson, they're just, you know, kind of just talking about different things that you should look out for when it comes to spending and budgeting. And um, see, it's talking about using like a spreadsheet as a tool. Um, there's just different things that this app can. Uh, definitely teach you. And I'm just going to fast forward just a little bit. And um, another good program to utilize or that I at least was utilizing for today's uh, lesson was the uh, small business budgeting and tracking and planning. So um, 
again, just another lesson that uh, teaches you about tracking and just about budgeting. And uh, another one that we were looking at was a uh, one on uh, just brand marketing and direct marketing. So I know we talked a little bit about those different forms of marketing, but this was a different one that I came across in here. So this is a uh, brand marketing is definitely really important because it's really about getting your name out there and building your brand and building awareness. And it also talks about a uh, direct response marketing and targeting people who are actively looking for what your product would be. So that is just a little bit of primer again. It's a great tool through Google and um, you can use that through uh, or you can download that through your Google Play Store or through your Apple Store if you have an iPhone. So now we're getting towards the end of the show. So this is where we bring on our special guest. And um, today we have Mr. Or we have Dean Franza, who is from Augusta University, uh, and he is from the James M. Hull College of Business, and he is also a professor of management. So welcome to Startup Sharp, and thank you so much for being here today, Dean Franza. Great. It's glad to be here. Thanks, Leah. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, just give us a little bit of background on um, just your career, the things that you've done, how you ended up becoming the dean of the School of Business over at Augusta University. Okay. Um, I'll just briefly touch on my, I was, I'm actually a retired Air Force officer. Um, I got my PhD while I was on active duty in the Air Force. Um, I got my PhD in, from Georgia Tech, actually in the area of operations management. So what we talked about uh what Leah talked about a little bit earlier. Um, so I can, that's, that's my area of uh, expertise. And uh, I, I started out as a faculty member um, first actually in the Air Force. Uh, then I was at Bentley University just outside of Boston. Um, and then I was in Kennesaw State University here in the, uh, well, in Metro Atlanta for almost 15 years. Uh, I started there as a faculty member and then became an associate dean, uh, well, a department chair, and then an associate dean. And then I've been the dean here at the Hull College of Business at Augusta University since February of 2017. So uh, now I do much more administration than I do teaching and research. <laughs> My background is in uh, operations, and that's where I've done a bulk of my teaching and uh my research. And I've also uh, got a team taught classes in, in operations and man and marketing together, which is actually, again, uh, appropriate for the presentation today, because operations and marketing have to be very much tied together. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to start off with the first question. Uh, what would you say is the best route to take when creating a budget for your small business? Well, um, hopefully you have a good idea what your um, product or service is. Uh, I think that's that's the place to start. And uh, as you mentioned in the presentation, um, budgeting is going to be a mix of uh, of variable and fixed costs. So uh, your fixed costs are typically uh, anything that's for your facilities, you know, cost of your facilities, uh, cost of any machinery, um, any uh, administrative costs, like any pe people who are on salary. Uh, so any, what we mean by fixed costs, which may have been Discuss, but just so we were clear on it, fixed costs are independent of how much you produce or sell. Uh, whereas variable costs uh, are, tend to be unit costs. So if you were uh, and you wanted to know what your unit cost of whatever you're selling, it is the labor and the materials 
that go into making that individual product. So when you're, when you're budgeting, you need to have a good handle on what the product or service you're making is going to cost. So you know that because what you want to do first is you want to obviously charge a price that's greater than that variable cost. And then that difference is first going to be applied to the fixed costs. And once you cover all your fixed costs, then you start making profit. So it's important to, to know what those costs are or you run the risk of, of not making a profit. Thank you. That is very good to know. Um, we still don't have any comments in our chat. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you a second question. Sure. Um, and this, this falls into your specialty. Um, there are so many different types of operational plans and uh, marketing plans that people can utilize, especially online. Um, do you have any insight that you may be able to offer to our viewers that they may not be able to find if they go on a website to look for it? Sure. Um, I think one thing that's very valuable for, for people to do, whether they're making a product or if they're, they have a service, is do a step-by-step -step on what it takes to actually make that product or deliver that service. So you don't need any special expertise in that, but it, um, but to get started, what you would do is list the steps that it takes to make, a, make your product or to, or to deliver your service. And that's the first thing you want to do is, is, is get that, they always say a picture is worth a thousand, thousand words. So if you can get that a, kind of a, a diagram of what it takes to produce your product or deliver your service, I think that's the best first step. And what you want to do then is determine how long each of those steps uh, take, uh, how much each of those steps cost, and you want to eliminate any wasted uh, time or cost in that process. So I think that's, that's always the best first step. And you actually though, start at the end and, and determine what is it that I want? What, what do I want? What do I want my product to be able to do? Or what do I want my service to be able to provide? And then work back through the steps it takes to get there. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and ask you this very last question because we're okay. starting to run out of time. Okay. Um, so I went through one of the uh, primer uh, tutorials about uh, brand marketing, um, and we talked a little bit about just different forms of marketing. What would you say is the best form of marketing? when you're getting started with a new business? Um, it's, you know, it's kind of a chicken or an egg thing. Um, I think, um, you know, you have to generate customers first. Uh, so, you know, ultimately you want your customers, really the most powerful uh, marketing is word of mouth because people trust the people they know. Uh, so, but, that only helps if you have existing customers. If you're brand new I, I, and you need to generate customers, I, I looked at your list that you presented in, and I'd say most effectively right now is social media. I think if you can use social media, you know, whether it be Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, um, Instagram, uh, where the key is to use the type of social media that your demographic that you're targeting uses. Okay. Um, you know, LinkedIn is focused more at the business user. Uh, so if you're looking for business users, you want to use LinkedIn. There's different age demographics. You know, Facebook tends to skew older than let's say Instagram or Snapchat. Um, Twitter is probably the one that spans the most ages and I'm just talking from an age standpoint, there are other demographics 
male versus female, um, uh, income levels and so forth. I don't have that, that detail, uh, at my fingertips, but that's what I would recommend doing is identify the social media. Social media is relatively inexpensive. You can, you know, you can do it for free. Basically it's the time you invest in it. Um, and it gets probably the widest audience. Um, so that would be my recommendation, particularly as you're starting out. The key thing is going to be once you generate those new customers that you deliver a good product or a good service, because once you start doing that, their word of mouth, which will often also occur through social media, will be very helpful um, in generating more customers. All right, Dean Franza, thank you so much for taking the time to come on to the show today. Your answers have been very informative. You've definitely taught me a lot today, and um, I appreciate you taking the time to come on. Thank you. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. All right. And I, you know, I'm more than willing if people have more, more questions. Uh, my email here at the university is just my first initial R, last name Franza. So our friends at augusta.edu and if anyone has uh questions i'd be willing to to respond to them via email and can you say that email one more time sure it's our friends that's r f r a n z a at augusta.edu all right and I'm just putting that up as a quick caption so that people can yep. see. So that's his address that's down there. If anybody has any more questions, uh, Dean Franza is open to answering those for you. So again, thank you so much, Dean. We really appreciate you being here and um, stay healthy and safe out there. Hey, you too. My pleasure. Thank you. Y'all have a great you. night. Thanks. Good night. All right, and that is our show for today. Thank you so much for coming out for Startup Sharp. We will be here again next Monday at 5.30 p.m., and we will be talking about business finance. So we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for tuning in.